Welcome to a brand new episode of Backstage 360. We'll have the lovely and talented Sheena Grob in for a chat. The brothers Landreth will play in the loft sessions and the proud sons will rock it out at Shaw TV Studios. But now it's another episode of Backstage Pass. We'll take you behind the scenes of a one of a kind music event. The late great Russian composer Mazursky composed pictures at an exhibition in honor of a dear artist friend who passed away tragically at the age of 39. He literally wanted to take the audience through an art exhibition. Fast forward now to 2016, artist Shirley Elias, along with the talented students at the Canadian Mennonite University, will take you on another journey. That's time behind the scenes of Musical.ly The Mazursky Project. is simply amazing. We have transformed the Canadian Mennonite University into pictures at an exhibition. And I have with me Shirley Elias, and you're with the piano faculty. Let's take a walk. Let's okay. take a walk through your exhibition. You are the artist. What was your inspiration? Well, the art and the music was my inspiration. And this project's been on my, near and dear to my heart, and it's been on my wish list for a long time. So the timing was just right. The students was a great fit uh, to put it together. And the music inspires the art. The art inspires the music. It's very symbiotic. Mm -hmm. So it was just a, a treat to work on it because you're dealing with the music as we're yeah. working in the lessons. This is the first time that I've intentionally taken a piece and try to understand it as an image. I just don't think like that so well when I'm learning a piece. And so for her to say, okay, well, so what are the words, what are the pictures that come to your mind when you play this song? At first I was like, uh, I don't know. Um, but she helped me to start really thinking that way. And as a result, when I play the song now, I'm thinking about the images and the story far more than I ever have with any of my other pieces before, which makes it come to life for me in a new way. So it's been very, it's been a good process for me creatively. Uh, and I hope that I can bring that into my other repertoire as well. I am personally not much of a visual artist at all, at all. Um, but it really gave me the chance to apply that vis uh, visual thinking to my playing. As well as being a part of such something so big, it kind of gives a cool aspect idea of being a part of the whole thing within it, and yet being one with the rest of everything that's going on. just a, a treat to work on it because you're dealing with the music as we're yeah. working in the lessons and then you go home and you're thinking about that and often in the lesson I'm writing, I'm, usually I'm yeah. writing what, about what they're playing but often I was writing in the guy, in my sidelines what I was going to paint, right? right. <laughs> and so I looked over, oh I'm not really paying attention to you because <laughs> I'm thinking about what I'm going to paint. Oh. Uh, but it was very inspiring, yeah. uh, the, working through it from, uh, from their level and, mm. and, and seeing it through new eyes. was one of intense nervousness at first as it was uh, a little weird as someone who's supposed to you know try and set the tone for the rest of these pianists um, 
But after a while, I sort of learned to grow really comfortable with how they were going to play their pieces, and that sort of gave me a roadmap for how to perform mine. So I think it was actually a really great experience. The theme from the promenade actually comes back five times throughout the entire work. Um, and so as you can see on this painting, there are five pianos kind of hidden in the painting. Um, the melody, that it's kind of a haunting melody that comes back throughout the, the work. Um, that's played originally by a trumpet in the original orchestration. And so you kind of can see a trumpet bell kind of coming through, kind of pervading this piece of art. Um, and so that's kind of how this piece of art reflects what we're going to be playing, which is completely fascinating to see because it's really unusual for us as, as a pianist to be able to um, have a piece of art to represent what we're doing too. So how is this going to be played out, Shirley? Well, so we have two pianos here, a Yamaha and a Steinway, and uh, we're, I, I wanted it to flow seamlessly, so I didn't want the, the spacing of the, the time that it took for one pianist to get up and the other one to come down. So they're really passing the baton between each other. So it's not, this. it's different than two piano playing. It's they're really playing the same piece, uh, but keeping that line going between the two of them. So one is playing and the, the, the second one is ready to go. And as soon as they're done, the next one falls into place and away they go. So take it away, Annalie. <laughs> Beautiful. Well, you've created some magic here, and there really is, I, I think, such a warm and welcoming environment here. The audience can meander around through. How long did this project take to do? Um, I've been working on it steady for about five months. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> uh, and because every piece is so animated and it's so different, yeah. and it was, and it, I wanted to do this project because it took me out of my side of my creative box. Essentially, I knew that in contrast to everything else that was going on, my piece is colorless, it's dark, it kind of stops everything else in its tracks and gives a dark intensity before letting everything continue. And so this really got me thinking from a different angle and each person's uh, personality comes out in the piece. Trying to match that is always uh, um, unique. <laughs> uh, and, and, and when it works, it's just fabulous. You can just see the person's a perfect fit for it. Well, something that was very cool that happened was that when I was learning this piece, I then sat down with it and I like sketched in little like image ideas. So here, uh, well, this piece is a lot about the, the folklore of Baba Yaga. So I thought, okay, here she's cackling and um, over here um, she's flying around. And there's one part where to me, I just like envisioned like a big red light breaking through trees. So I wrote that in and, and then, and I didn't talk to Shirley about it and she made her painting and she showed me the painting and you see the red light breaking through the trees and we realized oh, we, we both had the same image. So for me, it was just, again, it was just a learning process of 
of thinking outside the box, but then understanding how two people can actually really hear the same thing. So there's a communal aspect that I didn't expect to come out of it. Sometimes about 80% through the painting, I understand the personality of it, and then I'll inscript music into it. In this case, it was all about this music, but it, the life, it's inspiring the life of the canvas. Mm -hmm. And so it's very different coming from um, the, 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 the interpreter mm -hmm. to the creator. So the interpreter has the finished score, and now the creator has the blank canvas. And so, they, but they both have to bring them to life at the same time. I'm really excited. I think all of the work that we've been doing together is gonna finally culminate in this beautiful performance for everyone. And I'm really excited to be able to share that with people. It's unusual for us to be able to share our music and, um, and like, get people involved in another form of senses, right? get people involved visually too, so that's really exciting. Oh, I still get goosebumps listening to Catherine play and then Riley at the end. We now have Shirley sitting here. Shirley, it was such a pleasure and an honor to meet your students and to be part of this incredible one-of-a-kind event. Okay, so to recap, uh, Mazursky's Pictures at an Exhibition, Shirley the artist painted 11 mm -hmm. different paintings, all based on the 10 movements from the concerto played by the students. The students inspired you to do these incredible paintings. What was the evening like? It was beyond my expectations. <laughs> uh, it was, I've been blessed to have some great cultural experiences, and this is probably at the top right now. I mean, it's fresh, yeah. but the audience was on their feet uh, before Riley had finished his last chord. <laughs> and so it was a standing ovation. It was standing room only. The synergy between the pianists and between the the, paint, the music and the, and the artwork. Uh, and the audience, too, they were really a part of it because I talked about the process, not only of my process of creating the art, but the process of, of, the, of the pianists learning their, their music. So it really was, um, I was, they're my students, so I'm working with the, with the pianists all through the year, and I'm watching this music kind of come to life. And at the same time, I'm in the studio, and I'm working, watching this blank canvas come to life. So for the two parts that are very passionate to me, music <laughs> and art, to see them both come to life at the same time, time was kind of overwhelming. Yeah, well I can only imagine. But you are no stranger to this process because you had done something sort of like it with the symphony, with the WSO. And that's kind of what prompted this whole thing. Uh, they mm -hmm. called me a couple of years ago to say, we're doing pictures at an exhibition because it is also uh, orchestrated. But they called me like a week before. Uh, and I just <laughs> happened to have eight, I never have paintings at home. And I happened to have eight paintings that were heading off to a, a gallery. So I said, you can have them for the week. And they just wanted the stage to look like a gallery mm -hmm. because the music's about this imaginary art exhibition. So it was, uh, and as I sat there watching, and, uh, watching them play and, and listening to the whole experience, I thought, I have to create my own paintings specific to, because the music is so specific, it has specific titles, it mm -hmm. has specific imagery, the original paintings that it was based on. So there was a text, there was, a, there was this soundscape, there was so much to work on. So it's kind of been on my wish list for a while, and it, the students were right, and the, the timing was right, and it was just, just a joy to watch the whole thing come, come to fruition. And it must have been such an amazing experience for the students, too, as well. It really was, uh, especially once they saw it all come. They really hadn't, I'd been showing them the paintings on you know, their phone, <laughs> yeah. it was not quite the same as in person. And <laughs> when they got there at lunch for the dress rehearsal, and we had them also shown overhead so that they could see them, because they were all surrounding the room so the audience could see them as they're actually playing. And they all were, they got it. They, they got really it. got it, yeah. And, and, they was like, and, and then it became this collective. Mm -hmm. It wasn't about now you play, now you play, now it's your turn. It really was handing, because we had the two pianos, it was handing off the baton, right? Yeah. It was, just, it was so seamless from, from pianist to pianist that it really, it, this collective energy, and we worked on that, right? I said, oh, that, yes. we need this to, <laughs> I need the energy to go like this. Even though the energy of the music sometimes does become still, and then mm -hmm. sometimes it's frenetic. 
Uh, and it's tough to go from the frenetic ones to the ones that are a little calmer to pass a baton. It's a little easier if you're the, you're the pianist, one pianist. Right. But yes. tossing it off from keeping that energy going or that focus, uh, they did a fabulous job. Now, do you think this might open the doors to how symphonies perform or how, you know, they perf do their shows? Well, they're already, I think, in that, in that mode already because they're using the overheads uh, mm -hmm. so much more, the big screens. Uh, so the visual is becoming uh, a part of their process. And to be honest, that's in the back of my mind too because yes. this piece is orchestrated. So uh, we'll be um, emailing a few compo uh, conductors <laughs> that I know to see if, it might not be with the original paintings, but right. we have all the high resolution images uh, and then just the process that was involved, the thought process that went in marrying the, the two genres. Mm -hmm. So yeah, it's kind of on my next uh, wish list. <laughs> oh my goodness, well you always never fail to surprise me in what you encounter and what you want to dream up. I suggest move in, moving now into opera, into singing. Uh, okay, so that's the, just the, the next really project. The dramatic stage. Yes, yeah. I think so. Well, once again, musically, the Mazursky project certainly was a highlight for me to come and experience, you know, at the dress rehearsal and wish you all the best. Thank you for coming. All right. Okay. So don't go away. After the break, it's Snack in the Movie with Trevor Christensen. <laughs>